Welcome to another episode of the Art Patient Project. Thank you for joining me on this very wet day in September. New subscribers, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so, I think I've said before, I've got two elderberry trees in the garden as well as an hawthorn tree. And as you know, practicing herbalist, so I like to keep my hand in and make stuff, not particularly to sell guys, but to for myself. I have more than enough elderberries to uh, see me through the winter, as did last year's tinctures. Now last year I made um, a tincture is a herbal concoction and an alcohol extraction, simple. Um, it doesn't have to be herbal, it can be a fruit, in this case, elder. Um, they've started to drop off the tree and the birds are eating them. It's always a good sign. It's always September when they're ready, late August, September. If you leave them much longer, they drop all over the floor. And then you walk them in the house and walk them in uh, the gym or whatever. So you catch me, they're in a very, very, it's a very labour intensive guys because you've got to pull all the berries off into a bowl and then put the, bowl, uh, put the berries into tiny little bottles before you add the alcohol and then leave them for the best part of, I should leave it for probably eight weeks guys. Because I've still got some left over, I'm not in a hurry. Okay, while I'm doing this, I'll go into talking about all the benefits this can give you. It was Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, who described this plant as a medicine chest. The reason for that? It could cure so many ailments. Elderberries are particularly rich in flavonoids, especially anthocyanins, which are responsible for their deep purple, almost black colouring. These powerful antioxidants work to keep the immune system strong and resilient. Dr. Gerhard Reckemer is the president of Germany's Federal Research Institute for Nutrition and Food. His research has shown that anthocyanins in elderberries boost the production of cytokines. We've spoken about these many times, guys. Proteins that act as messengers within the immune system, thereby enhancing the body's immune response. Cytokines play a crucial role role in the immune system's response to disease and work in ways very similar to hormones. They can be both inflammatory or anti-inflammatory depending on what is needed and how they are released by the immune cells either directly into the bloodstream or locally into body tissue during an immune response. These tiny berries are also believed to contain antiviral agents. Seem to be living in a world of viruses at the minute, don't we guys, eh? I won't get into it. Compounds so potent they are thought to deactivate viruses. Viruses are unable to multiply on their own and need to get inside an healthy cell to do so. They are cleverly coated with something called hemagglutin spikes to help them pierce the cell wall. These viral spikes are also covered with enzymes which the viruses use to break down the cell wall. Elderberries have high concentrations of bioflavonoids which appear to inhibit the action of the enzyme thus deactivating viruses and rendering them unable to pierce the cell wall and replicate. 
elderflower is also packed with bioflavonoids. Now I'm only using the berries here guys, by the way. Colds and flu. The humble elderberry is perhaps the most famously used for the treatment of colds and flu. There is much evidence for its effectiveness with double blind placebo controlled trials during an outbreak of influenza B in Panama in 1995. The study found that within two days there were significant improvements in symptoms including fever among 93% of those taking elderberry syrup, 90% of the elderberry group were completely well within two days. Amazing, eh? Cystitis, urinary tract and bladder infections. Most commonly affecting women, although men are certainly not exempt, UTIs, urinary tract infections, cystitis and bladder infections cause a world of misery and pain. I've suffered from this myself, guys. The constant surge to urinate accompanied by a burning sensation can leave the sufferer feeling housebound and depressed. Elderberry tea or tincture may bring significant relief from this debilitating condition. First and foremost, acting as a diuretic. This is important as it causes the kid kidneys to continually flush out toxins while increasing urination. This in turn helps to flush out the bacteria that causes cystitis, reducing the likelihood of the infection spreading to the bladder and or kidneys and may also help to reduce its duration. Its anti-inflammatory properties may help to reduce inflammation, potentially reducing the burning and pain which accompanies urination. Elderberry's immunostimulating and anti-inflammatory properties make it a great natural remedy for allergy symptoms. Inflammation of the sinuses, sneezing, itching, and watery eyes, swelling and a runny stuffy nose can all benefit from this potent herb. It is thought to be particularly good for eye fever and strengthening the upper respiratory tract. Elderberry's anti-catarrhal action is also effective in clearing congestion and runny noses caused by seasonal allergies. The high fiber content of elderberries can also eliminate constipation, reduce excess gas and generally increase the health of the gastrointestinal system. The dietary fiber contained in these berries can also increase the nutrient uptake efficiency especially in the gut helping you to get more out of the food that you eat. And finally, it was said that one who falls asleep under the branches of the elder tree would have vivid dreams of fairy realms and be transported to Celtic fairy lands. Well guys, I've got two or three elderberry trees in my garden and I haven't quite experienced that yet but I look forward to it. Thanks very much for listening and look out for more videos soon.